The most fearless critic of Islam in the world today is not the apostate prophet, or Sam Shamoon, or Jay Smith, or Christian Prince, or David Wood. The most fearless critic of Islam in the world is a five foot two woman named Hatun Tash. Hatun has been repeatedly attacked for preaching the gospel and for exposing Muhammad. She's usually attacked off camera, but occasionally while cameras are rolling. Hatun was hit in the face several months ago for showing people Muhammad cartoons. Dad looks so like that. upset. Maybe your dad looks like that. I don't know. Be honest. If Be my if my Does father dad is like Muhammad, that? have Does respect to the like dog. After that attack, Muslims started circulating the lie that it was an Assyrian Christian who attacked her. Eventually, even the Speaker's Corner Muslims had to admit that the man who attacked Hatun was indeed a Muslim who had been told to say that he was a Christian if things became violent at Speaker's Corner. But even though the lie was exposed, Muslims around the world still believed their own lie. And to this day, I get messages claiming that it was a Christian who attacked Hatun. Fast forward to today, Hatun was stabbed multiple times in the name of Allah. She was wearing a Charlie Hebdo shirt. Soko Films accidentally caught the attack on camera. They were filming a different discussion, but the camera catches the attack in the background. The kalam of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is word. But the spirit... Oh, it's going, something going on. Hold on, hold on. What happened? Now, from this angle and at this speed, it's hard to tell if the man punches Hatun or stabs her in the face. But when I slow down the video, you can see the knife as it slashes Hatun in the face. And this guy just keeps stabbing and slashing her in the name of Allah for the sake of his false prophet. He's aiming for her neck. Why? Because the Quran says, smite at their necks. Fortunately, Hatun put her arm up to shield her neck, but she got some wounds on her arm as a result. There are always lots of cameras at Speaker's Corner, so I'm sure that some additional footage will be posted, but here's another angle. I think it would be this one. Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. Whoa, 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 whoa. whoa. Shortly after she was repeatedly stabbed in the name of Allah, Hatun passed out. Oh my god, Lord, sister, 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 shit. Oh my god, Lord Jesus Christ. Yeah, somebody needs to call the ambulance. My Lord. Trust me, you're okay. Then she got back up and started preaching to Muslims. Essentials for you to remember, dear Muslim people. Dear Muslim people, Lord Jesus doesn't need me. Allah is in need of you for to be God. Allah cannot do without you. Your prophet cannot live without you. Cutting people's arms, cutting people's arms is not going to help you. Muslim people, you know how much it hurts when you run away from Lord Jesus Christ? It's not about the blood on my hand. It is unacceptable. It is unacceptable you are running away from Lord Jesus Christ. It is unacceptable. 21st century, you haven't repented. And what you do is chop people's hands off. Eventually, she was taken away by police. The police are here. Now, why was Hatun attacked today? Is it because all ideologies have their extremists? Or is it because Islam commands its adherents to kill people, even women, for criticizing Muhammad? Let's read three passages. In Ibn Asak, pages 550 to 551, we read about various people Muhammad ordered his followers to kill. Another was Abdullah ibn Qatil of Banu Taim ibn Ghalib. He had become a Muslim, and the apostle sent him to collect the poor tax in company with one of the Ansar. He had with him a freed slave who served him. He was a Muslim. When they halted, he ordered the latter to kill a goat for him and prepare some food and went to sleep. 
When he woke up, the man had done nothing, so he attacked and killed him and apostatized. He had two singing girls, Fartana and her friend, who used to sing satirical songs about the apostle, so he ordered that they should be killed with him. Muhammad ordered his followers to kill these singing girls for singing satirical songs about him. In Ibn Asak, page 676, we read about a woman named Asma bint Marwan. After Muhammad ordered his followers to murder a man who was more than a hundred years old for making fun of Muhammad, Asma bint Marwan said that there should be retaliation against Muhammad for having people killed. Let's see how Muhammad responded. When the apostle heard what she had said, he said, Who will rid me of Marwan's daughter? Umar ibn Adi al-Katmi, who was with him, heard him. And that very night he went to her house and killed her. In the morning he came to the apostle and told him what he had done. And he, Muhammad, said, You have helped God and his apostle, O Umer. When he asked if he would have to bear any evil consequences, the apostle said, Two goats won't butt their heads about her. So Umer went back to his people. You have helped God and his apostle, Umer, by doing what? by slaughtering this woman in the name of Allah. In Sunan Abu Dawud 4361, Muhammad makes it clear that brutally murdering a woman is perfectly acceptable as long as the woman made fun of him. It was narrated that Ikrama said, Ibn Abbas told us that a blind man had a female slave, she was his slave girl, who had borne him a child. So, like Muhammad, this man had sex with his slave girls who reviled the prophet and disparaged him. And he told her not to do that, but she did not stop. And he rebuked her, but she paid no heed. One night she started to disparage and revile the prophet, so he took a dagger and put it in her stomach and pressed on it and killed her. There fell between her legs a child who was smeared with the blood that was there. The next morning mention of that was made to the prophet, and he assembled the people and said, by Allah, I adjure the man who did this to stand up. The blind man stood up and came through the people, trembling, and he came and sat before the prophet. He said, O messenger of Allah, I am the one who did it. She used to revile you and disparage you, and I told her not to do it, but she did not stop, and I rebuked her, but she paid no heed. I have two sons from her, who are like two pearls, and she was good to me. Last night she started to revile you and disparage you, and I took a dagger and placed it on her stomach, and I pressed on it until I killed her. The prophet said, Bear witness that no retaliation is due for her blood. Notice this guy went full vigilante. There was no trial. This man's slave girl, who was also the mother of his children, made fun of Muhammad for being the most obvious false prophet in history. The man brutally murdered her, and Muhammad approved of the murder. Here we are, 14 centuries later, wondering why a Muslim at Speaker's Corner just stabbed a Christian woman who was wearing a Charlie Hebdo shirt. Are we starting to understand Islam yet? Now, when jihadis attack a woman, some people experience a desire for revenge. Some people think that they need to respond to violence with more violence. If you're one of the people who thinks that you have to go out and attack a random Muslim as some sort of retaliation, let me tell you, you're a moron and an embarrassment. Attacking a Muslim in response to an attack on Hatun Tash will not help Hatun and will not teach anyone a lesson. Apart from being a horrible thing to do, attacking a Muslim will have an effect that is precisely the opposite of whatever you're intending. People will say, you see, there's violence on all sides. This proves that it has nothing to do with Islam. That's why the government needs to ban criticism of Islam. And then Facebook and Twitter and YouTube will ban more people for criticizing Islam, which is exactly what the terrorists want. I know that emotions are running high when there's an attack like this, but if you want to respond appropriately, think about what Hatun would want and think about what the stabbing today was meant to accomplish. The attacks on Hatun are meant to silence critics of Islam. They're meant as a warning against anyone who would dare mock Muhammad. So if you want to respond to the attack on Hatun, respond by mocking Muhammad. Anyone can do that. 
and, if you're a Christian, by preaching the gospel to Muslims. That's what Hatun would want, and that's how you show people the truth about Islam. Islam has been murdering critics for 14 centuries. Why? Because Islam can't handle criticism. When your religion is built upon the insane ramblings of an illiterate caravan robber who had sex with a prepubescent girl, you can't allow mockery because mockery is an extremely effective tool against the insane ramblings of an illiterate caravan robber who had sex with a prepubescent girl. So, what do we do? We criticize, we mock, we expose. On a side note, I know that many of you are wondering if there's a way to support Hatun's work financially. The problem here is that whenever we suggest a fundraiser to support Hatun or to hire professional security, she says no. She doesn't want it. So, I'm going to respect her wishes and not try to raise money for security or for any medical costs. Instead, I'll just ask all of you to subscribe to her channel, DCCI Ministries. The link is in the description box. I am not, under any circumstances, going to draw attention to the PayPal link to support DCCI Ministries. I'm just giving you the link so you can subscribe.